Governance Island is a 172-acre former military base uh, that is about halfway between Lower Manhattan and downtown Brooklyn. We're largely a recreational destination for New Yorkers. We get nearly a million New Yorkers that visit us between the months of May uh, and October to recreate and play uh, and relax in a car-free environment. We've got about a million and a half square feet of historic buildings in the historic district, which range from small single-family houses to large historic barracks. But we're largely a park that people come and relax in a car-free environment to get away from the city. When I arrived here about a year and a half ago, uh, we realized that we didn't have any Wi-Fi at all. And as we increasingly get more people visiting us, it was a, a noticeable omission that we didn't have technology that really supported the things that they wanted to do or the future tenants that we're going to invite here. So what we saw was there was a great opportunity to have a neutral platform where we could basically start from scratch. Uh, so we created the challenge to basically create a platform that folks could begin to look at what are the most innovative technologies uh, starting in you know 2017 that you would begin from the ground up. So the challenge was inviting the tech community to say what would you do with this neutral platform uh, where you could bring the most innovative technology into the middle of one of the densest cities uh, in North America. We believe that 5G is the next generation of what Wi-Fi and connectivity will be. So we saw Governor's Island as a great platform for doing that since the trust is a type of entity which is very unique uh, in America in that we control both the open spaces, the buildings, the trees, the landscape. So it's basically one-stop shopping in terms of how you could deploy the most innovative technology in the most optimal way. So what we've invited uh, some of our respondents to do is to think holistically and comprehensively about how you can deploy a system which has a minimal footprint, which could be deployed very, very quickly and very affordably and be a real test bed for what the future of 5G and connectivity should be. Well, what we did is that we invited the world, we created a challenge to say, what would you do to bring connectivity to Governor's Island? Uh, we invited people from around the world and around the country and around the city to look at the island to say, what type of technology is going to be uh, the future for um, our generation? And what they were able to do, we had about three dozen respondents who looked at and were interested in what uh, technology should come here. We narrowed that field down to about 12 who wrote us proposals on how they would actually bring technology to the island and how they would deploy it. And then we finally winnowed that crowd down to three who actually tested it here on the island and how they would look at um, uh, bringing connectivity to Governor's Island. And in the test bed, which we did uh, in the winter of this year, actually only two out of the three finalists could make their system work. So then we entered into final negotiations with the winner to figure out how we could actually deploy this technology in the most optimal, fast, uh, and efficient way. Well, interestingly, line of sight was one of the challenges that we found. Some folks thought that they, on paper, it looked like they could connect and uh, between where, they, uh, where their antenna was and where the island was. But uh, one of the three, as I pointed out, uh, wasn't able to connect. So I think it was getting optimal line of sight and actually getting the technology uh, to work because something like trees do get in the way. And yet the fact that we have trees here was a way that people could begin to look at um, how they could actually locate the antennas and the radios in order to provide the best signal. Well, I think what was probably most unexpected is that we went down to two finalists who were basically neck, uh, neck to neck when it came to both the technology and the deployment. And so in the end, we ended up going with the winner who actually had the fewest number of radios to get us the best system. So we want to have basically a light footprint. I mean, the idea of the challenge was what could we do for the next three to five years, which really builds kind of a foundation for the future. So having someone that was nimble enough to have the lightest footprint and yet with the most rigorous signal, uh, that was the winning combination. But what's unique about the trust is that we own the landscape and the buildings and all of the infrastructure. So we were able to give uh, the winner a real platform to say that you could put the radios in buildings, you could put them on light poles, you could put them on infrastructure, you could put them uh, on landscape. And we gave them a, a very flexible palette, which, you know, I hope is in inspiration for the rest of the country when you look at, you know, where technology technology should be placed and we shouldn't just limit it to properties that we actually happen to own or control. So the trust is this unique entity, much like a college university, wherein while we're responsible for the management and maintenance, we're also responsible for all of the physical structures, including the landscape. So we were able to give uh, the, the, the competitors uh, a real kind of open platform where they could 
innovate in a way that you probably aren't able to do in many American cities where you have this balkanized ownership of, you know, the landscape versus transportation infrastructure versus buildings. But here on Governor's Island, we are kind of a platform for innovation in that we could say to somebody, you can go wherever you want and actually optimize the location of that technology. Well, to me, you know, we're already in a smart city. You know, to me, you know, Uber and Lyft and Seamless are smart city technologies. So one of the things that I've learned is that a smart city is what you do with the technology. Uh, so having a rigorous infrastructure to allow people to innovate, to experiment, to make mistakes, to you know, create great companies that actually make the user the center of gravity. So I very much believe that the smart city puts the user in the center and the technology is really in service of that uh, user.